My name's Matt, welcome back to the shop, and today this is a shop chat. This is um, me talking, or me going through an opinion. Going through an opinion? God, get it together, you dickhead. Batman will come for me. Batman? Batman, you say? Coming for you! Um, this is my opinion on something, let's put it that way. So this is all about um, disc buttons. So for those of you who don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, um, high performance discs generally, lower performance ones are uh, just solid discs. So if we look at the R5, it has a solid mounted disc, there's no buttons or uh, a hub carrier or anything like that or a rotor. It's just a solid rotor that's fixed to the wheel because uh, it has a fully f fully floating caliper. But anyway, I did a video called uh, Floaters <laughs> and what basically the calipers are out. We'll actually go more into that and why we do this. Um, but basically, I'll put some pictures up and stuff. What you have is you have an inner an inner hub carrier and then you have a rotor on the outside. Should have done that a different colour. And then what you have is you have these buttons. They're basically just pins like this. Um, that's shit they done in it. And then they have uh, a flat washered surface, a flat shouldered surface on both sides to basically clamp the disc. Why do we have this? Well, this is to stop vibrations and stuff as you clamp onto these discs. The alignment is never going to be perfect. So this allows the disc to move. It also allows the disc to thermally expand without pulling on the hard mounts for your wheel. Gets rid of a lot of squeal and vibration and stuff like that. Um, some of these buttons nowadays they have what they call the is it the T? So instead of having a circle and having the two sections like this, they'll have um, flat sides like that. So basically, it's more of a sliding motion, a radial outwards motion instead of this rocking backwards and forwards it also stops them nipping up when they get hot and that causes the disc to deflect and all sorts of rubbish but there are two types of buttons there are riveted buttons so this is where they do it at the factory and it's just like any kind of rivet you force through one side of it and then you squash it just like chain rivets in a sense a bit different than that but you know these are broad rivets and there's the other type where basically it's a rivet that goes through You've got wave washers or a washer just to dis uh, distribute the load. And then there's a, an actual E-clip. Um, I'll show you some pictures and stuff. There's actual E-clip ones. This means that you can replace your rotor without having to fuck around with your hub. Um, we'll go through. There are ways that you can rotate these buttons to clean them up a bit. I've seen people spray them with oil. <laughs> yeah, great. Uh, brake clean, you know, a brake cleaner, that's usually the best thing to use. Carb cleaner, you can get away with that as well. Um, but basically it's just to clean all the shit out, so these, basically these buttons can actually move and do their job. Uh, to free them up and stop it all going titty wampus. Um, what I have seen a lot of people doing on YouTube on these videos is they drill out these rivets and then replace them with E-clip versions. Of the buttons, where they have this folded over rivet face. You're just gonna drill them so they look something like that. So you keep drilling, and you notice that on a normal one, the, rib, the uh, wavy spring is equidistant around the ring. But then on one that I've drilled out, it's kinda popped all the way to one side. Now you see the underside, and we're gonna put this washer on the opposite side. And then the C-clip is going to come in and be pushed on there. Oh, uh, I don't like that. And the reason why I don't like that is because the manufacturers basically decided to specify a riveted version versus the E-clip. E-clip ones that I've seen are generally on dirt bikes and stuff like that, um, where your braking isn't life-saving because you're not going a thousand miles an hour you know you're a lot slower speeds the bike weighs a lot you know a lot less and there's a few dodge I, I the way i see it is there's these dodgy companies that are selling these buttons um as far as i've seen i and please put a description if i'm wrong because uh, i could be because this is just my opinion um 
but I haven't seen where Brembo or anyone will sell you buttons that fit rotors that were actually originally riveted rotors. It's easy to do, you just drill out the rivets and you take them apart. Really don't like the idea of that. They have specified and they have clearances and the tolerances and the load on the rivets and all the rest of it. And these companies are selling these shitty e-clip ones. If your bike comes with an e-clip one, don't get me wrong, then yes, they are designed to be replaceable. And someone has calculated that all the loads and the preload and the washers and all the rest of it and all the tolerances and um, clearances and stuff are correct to allow this to actually move and operate properly. I just, this whole drilling out discs, it's anyway when you start fucking around with discs, to me it's like if your buttons are all crusty and knackered or something shit like that, then chuck away the fucking disc, you know what I mean? If they're really causing you a problem, you've got brake squeal and all the rest of it, replace your disc. Hope that makes sense and I'll see you in a bit.